Welcome, everybody. It's my pleasure today to introduce Petar Pavasic. And today he'll be telling us about category weight and minimal triangulations. Okay, thanks a lot. I'm really glad and grateful uh, for your invitation. Uh, so let me just start. This is some, uh, if you want, hybrid topic between uh, combinatorial geometry and uh, loosening neuronal category methods. Uh, so as uh, Henry said, the title is about category weight and minimal triangulations. Uh, and whenever I say we, uh, I mean, uh, since this is joint work with Dan Gautz and Vatsal Narsantovic, so whenever I say we, I mean uh, the three of us. Okay, so um, actually I, I will uh, treat category weights and, uh, uh, and uh, connected things uh, at the very, uh, very end. I decided to give you some, uh, if you want, leisurely introduction uh, to this. So uh, just first to explain why uh, are we considering explicit triangulations? Uh, how is this connected to uh, to homotopy theory, and then how do uh, how do we estimate this? So first of all, of course, everyone is uh, aware that uh, triangulations are useful. Uh, normally, we assume that uh, our spaces, manifolds, or more general spaces, uh, are, can be triangulated. Um, but most of the time, we don't have explicit triangulations of those. And still, I mean, if you have an explicit triangulation of, of a space, then this can be uh, very useful. And maybe to give you just a, I mean, small sample, of course, I mean, for most people in, uh, in applied uh, um, topology, it is clear why it is useful to have an uh, explicit triangulation. And uh, it is maybe surprising that for many, many known spaces, we, we don't know uh, any triangulations, even including, uh, say complex projective spaces uh, and and other yeah and I mean th this talk will give you a bit an, of an uh, explanation or, or, or a reason why this is uh, why this is the case. Okay, so but first of all, if you have an explicit triangulation, how how can it be uh, helpful? Uh, I would first start with this uh, example. So. Um, uh, even if you have an explicit triangulation, it's sometimes hard to say uh, 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 which space it uh, represents. And there was a long uh, uh, open, uh, open question. There was an explicit triangulation with 15 vertices. And Brehm and Kuhner sometimes in the 80s conjectured that the, that's a triangulation, the minimal triangulation of the quaternionic projective uh, plane. But uh, they were not able to uh, to prove that because it has the right cohomology, everything. Uh, but there are two possibilities if you if you think of the classification of those uh, highly connected manifolds, and those two are um, uh, can be distinguished using um, uh, Pontiagin rational Pontiagin classes. Uh, but of course, it is extremely difficult to compute uh, uh, rational Pontiagin classes. It is uh, uh, it is a hard question. So sometimes around 2005 to 2010, Guy Fulin um, published a, a couple of papers explaining how can you uh, compute uh, so-called Guy Fulin uh, formulas. Uh, how how I mean you can compute combinatorially Pontryagin, rational Pontryagin classes from, uh, uh, from, uh, from the triangulation, but it is extremely complicated and extremely hard to, uh, to implement. So it was only like two years ago uh, that uh, Gorodkov was able to implement this to, to check, I think it was more than 3000 links of, um, uh, of uh, I think, co-dimension four uh, synthesis. Uh, implemented the formula and showed that uh, this 15 vertex uh, uh, simplicial complex is actually uh, uh, a quaternionic projective uh, plane. Uh, for another example, there is uh, my result from, oh, it's uh, 2019, I think. Uh, if you have a space, then you can relatively easily, I mean, a triangulation, you can relatively easily uh, check if it is a, a 
homology manifold because it's uh, computational. But I mean, then then you still don't know whether it is actually uh, a manifold. And uh, I again use these methods uh, to show that if the links of simplices are small, which means that essentially there uh, there are not many points at most three times the codimension uh, uh, of each vertex of each uh, simplice, is there uh, is that's uh, the upper bound for the number of uh, of vertices, then this is actually a PL map. Okay, so I mean, kind of a recognition principle. So these are two uh, um, kind of uh, applications, which, given an explicit um, uh, simplicial complex, can you uh, can give you some information about those um, uh, spaces? Okay. Uh, of course, uh, both uh, both examples somehow show that uh, small triangulations are really desirable. Uh, and on the other hand, it is clear that the size of a triangulation really increase with the complexity, uh, with the complexity of the space. So for a for a case which is completely solved, it is uh, exactly known what are the minimal triangulations of surfaces. If you take a surface, it's, it is really easy to construct a triangulation, uh, say by adding, if you want, tori or projective spaces. So you can easily produce triangulations. Uh, whose size, which means that it's usually denoted F0. So this is a uh, uh, number of vertices in a triangulation of a uh, uh, surface of, uh, 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 of genus G, uh, you can clearly obtain triangulations uh, which are lean, increase linearly with the genus of G. But the minimal triangulations that are known are actually of the size of the uh, uh, of the square root of G, which is way 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 smaller. So, for example, <laughs> if, if you take uh, a, a surface of genus one million, uh, the minimal triangulation which exists, which it can be explicitly constructed, has three thousand four hundred sixty eight vertices. And in this triangulation, every two vertices are either connected by, a, uh, by an edge or have a common name. This means that, I mean, minimal triangulations are not what you normally think. These are incredibly, incredibly tight. I mean, everything is almost connected with, uh, with everything else. So it is hard to say, I mean, how, how big uh, triangulation is needed because I mean you would expect uh, many more so in, in the order of uh, millions of vertices actually less than 3500 is enough to triangulate such a big uh, uh, such a big surface and the things get even more complicated with the uh, increase of dimension. Okay. Pedro, can I ask a question here? Oh, sure. These triangulations are fascinating to me so it's probably correct to say that if you wanted to embed such a triangulation into 3D, the edges would need to be curved. Is that correct? Uh, I think so. There are there are some open. Uh, so that that that's not really uh, uh, my topic. But there are there are some uh, open conjectures which uh, uh, explicit triangulations can be embedded in uh, R3 and which cannot. And I would expect that you probably need here. Uh, I mean, if you don't want them straight. Uh, it is probably not possible in uh, in three dimensions. You you would need four dimensions. But that's I mean that's just my guess. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Minimal always means in terms of vertices or in terms of simplices in general. Okay. So uh, for for surfaces, this is um, it, it's easy to see. This is the same. So it, the the same it minimizes the uh, number of vertices. Uh, one-dimensional edges and, and, and triangles. In general, but the edges, is, right? But the edges are growing linearly, right? They have to. Uh, yeah. Right. Sure. <laughs> but, uh, so. uh, okay. I mean, the, uh, the minimal triangulation minimizes all three of them. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, uh, the, the point is, which which do you uh, kind of consider at the most? I mean, commonly considered are either the number of vertices of the number of facets so that of the top dimensional uh, uh, simplices. Now, uh, uh, okay, let me just move a few lines uh, below because, and, and, and then I will uh, continue to answer to, to this. So 
the um, if you, I mean, from the point of viewpoint of combinatorial geometry, uh, the main results and main techniques are a kind of algebraic. Uh, they use, uh, there, there are theorems called upper bound theorems and lower bound theorems, and they use uh, commutative algebra uh, and uh, standardizers um, uh, rings to, uh, to give some information about. And there are some recent results uh, which give you really good estimates for uh, high dimensional simplices based on uh, Betty numbers and uh, uh, things that you know about the um, uh, about the homology but in a sense none of those give you any good estimate or any systematic estimate of the number of vertices so it is in a sense nice and uh, surprising that uh, you, you can give some systematic uh, uh, results using essentially uh, category and uh, and couplings. So I mean this this is going to be a topic of the rest of my uh, of my talk. So yes, I'm going to talk only about the number of vertices because this is the uh, I mean, once you have a number of vertices, you you get some estimates on, on other dimensions, but uh, in a sense, you get better estimates using, for example, the so-called generalized lower bound theorem. Uh, uh, and while, I mean, in, in a sense, our method is strongest when we want to estimate the number of vertices. So that's... Uh, mm -hmm. okay. Um, okay, so uh, the, the first thing that the main, the main uh, um, uh, Thing to, to in a sense to, to uh, as a starting point is that of course the size of a minimal triangulation is is by I mean not even close to a, to a homotopy invariant. Eh? So we are going to use a homotopy invariant concept as an estimate for it, and this is uh, related to, to good, good covers. Of course, everyone knows that the good cover of uh, of a space X is uh, a cover, and, and I'm going to consider only open covers, where all elements and all non-empty intersections are conjugate. And uh, of course, typical examples are if you take a triangulation of X, uh, then open stars of vertices are a good cover of X. If you take a Riemannian manifold, then you can take geodesic uh, um, balls and get. But I mean, since we are talking about uh, polyhedra, I'm, uh, I mean, for me, uh, it is open stars of vertices uh, and they represent a good, good cover of X. And in the other direction, if you have a good cover, then th there is a standard nerve theorem saying that X, of course, assuming that X is a, is a, is a nice space. X is homotopy equivalent to the geometric realization of the nerve. So we can think of this as a kind of, a, I mean, we can define this as a homotopy triangulation of X. Uh, well, combining these two essentially says that uh, you can define the minimal size, and so this is the definition that was introduced by Max Karubi and Jacques Weibel uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, they defined a CT of X, covering type of X, to be the minimal size of a good cover of some space that is not necessarily X, but is homotopy equivalent to X. I mean, defined this way, this is clearly a, a homotopy invariant. And uh, you can re rephrase this by saying this is just the minimal number of vertices in a homotopy triangulation of X. Okay, and clearly this is a lower bound for the number of vertices in a proper triangulation of X. So CT of X covering type of X is going to be our main player. I mean, we are going to estimate CT of X and derive uh, uh, estimates for the uh, size of a triangulation of X. So I'm not, not going to repeat this. We are going to, to estimate CT of X all the time. Okay, so the main uh, points here are that CT of X is a homotopy invariant of X by definition, and it is a lower bound, a homotopy invariant lower bound for the size of a minimal triangulation of X that can be obtained. Fine. Uh, any questions so far before I go to the next? Uh... OK, fine. So uh, um, let me show, show you how, uh, how it is possible to estimate CT of X or covering type of X 
uh, using just the standard plane category, uh, Lustenich Schneiderman category. Yeah? So, I mean, we are going to uh, simply rely on two uh, facts. One of them is that category is um, uh, at most dimension of x plus one. So uh, you see that my uh, I'm the uh, non-normalized guy, and whenever I, I write the dimension, I will uh, I will think of a homotopy dimension. So I mean, I'm not adding uh, extra uh, extra cells, extra, extra things. And then uh, uh, if dimension of uh, the nerve, and this is homotopy dimension of uh, nerve, is bigger than n, then uh, Necessarily, there are uh, n plus one uh, elements of U which have a, a, a non-trivial intersection. Because if there are not, of course, then uh, 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 then the dimension, the homotopy dimension of, of, of the nerve is smaller uh, is smaller than n. And well, if they are, then again, since they are. Uh, their intersection is non-trivial. That means that the nerve of only those, uh, of, uh, the nerve of those sets is a simplex, and by nerve theorem, so it is contractible. So if you have uh, a certain number of elements of the of the good cover, whose intersection is non-trivial, uh, its union must be contractible. So we are going to combine these two facts to give an estimate for the uh, for the covering type of X. How it goes. Um, so let me abbreviate category of X to C um, and let me take any good cover for X. Huh? Uh, so uh, since that, then uh, category of X is uh, C, then uh, there must be C elements of the good cover with a non empty intersection. Because otherwise, I mean, the, the here by uh, the dimension would be uh, would be smaller, and the category cannot be it cannot be C. So there are C elements uh, with a non-empty intersection, which means that the, their union is contractible. So in particular, it is categorical. Okay. Uh, since it is categorical, if I take uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 entire good cover and uh, remove those C elements. Uh, the category of the uh, of the resulting space uh, can decrease at most by one, which means its category is at least c minus one. And you immediately see this is a base of uh, for induction. So now I know that there are at least c minus one uh, open set that remains here that remain here, which intersect non-trivially. Their union is categorical. If I remove uh, uh, them, the resulting space. Uh, has a category at more at least c minus two and so on. So it's easy to um, to add those up. We conclude that the good cover has at least c times c plus one halves elements. Okay, which means the covering type and thus then the number of uh, vertices in any triangulation of X is at uh, at least uh, one half of category times category X plus one. Easy, relatively, uh, I mean, cheap, and gives interesting results. So it gives that uh, category of RPN is uh, at least, so not category, I'm sorry, um, co covering type. So every triangulation of RPN, say, uh, uh, needs at least n plus one times n plus two halves uh, vertices. The same estimate for the category of CPN. Uh, if you uh, if you take a sphere, uh, you get of course uh, two times three halves, which is uh, which is three. So uh, I mean the covering type of S uh, SN is uh, uh, at least three. Okay, now <laughs> uh, this uh, this estimate is good. Uh, actually, best known lower estimate. Huh? Uh, <laughs> this one is really bad because uh, the covering type of an n-dimensional sphere can be. Uh, I mean, the, it is n plus two, so uh, exact value is. Uh, we will see why 
uh, it is m plus two. Uh, this one is not that bad, but still it is about the half of, uh, of the value that we are able uh, to obtain uh, by considering cohomology products. So let me say this one is also. Awesome. Huh? And the reason is, uh, is not difficult to see. I mean, th these two spaces are not simply connected. I, I mean, I, uh, are simply connected. This one is actually uh, n minus one connected. And um, category essentially counts. Um, OK, we, we, I will explain it a, a bit later. Um, uh, category essentially counts how many elements can intersect non-trivially. Uh, covering type, uh, as we will see, count each element uh, together with its with uh, its dimension. So that that improves the, the result. Okay, so I mean this this, this was a bit uh, uh, unclear, but it, it's going to become more clear in, in a moment. So um, instead of using category, uh, we are going to use coupling estimates of the category uh, of the covering type of x. Uh, so again, I'm essentially repeating at least the beginning part, uh, the initial part of the, of the argument. Uh, assume that u is a good cover of x. And assume that we have some non-trivial uh, product in the cohomology of x of, uh, I mean, this is, of course, uh, uh, in the in the reduced cohomology effects, so elements of positive uh, of positive dimension. Um, of course, this means that the category of the space is uh, at, at least n plus one, but uh, we will see that uh, we'll, in general we get a better estimate that uh, that the category estimate that they uh, that they uh, proved uh, earlier. Yeah? So first of all, since I have this product which is non-zero then uh, the dimension of the space is at least n. So as before, I have at least this product plus one elements of u which intersect because otherwise I wouldn't get the, the dimension and I wouldn't get uh, uh, cohomology elements uh, which are uh, sufficiently, uh, I mean, of sufficient dimension. And again, I mean, this means that uh, uh, since they intersect, their, their union is, uh, uh, is contractible, hence it is categorical. If I remove them, then by the usual argument, uh, I obtain a space where uh, actually any product of length n minus one, but I can take u2 to un uh, to be, uh, is non-zero. And because if it was, uh, uh, I mean, uh, if you have this one is zero and then the remaining u1 is automatically zero when restricted to the categorical set. So the product would be zero, and which is not, I mean, because our assumption was that the product was not. Um, and so again, uh, since this product is non zero, we can conclude that at least the dimension of this u2, u3, and so on up to un plus one element. Uh, so at least that many elements uh, among the remaining open sets. Uh, in the in the in the cover u must intersect because otherwise we wouldn't have a sufficiently big dimension that that gives uh, I mean room uh, for um, uh, for this uh, product um, and again you see uh, uh, induction what you, uh, what I add is uh, I start with one plus dimension u one u two up to u n and then one plus dimension without u1, it starts from u2 and so on. So essentially you, you get uh, once dimension of u1, two times dimension of u2, three times dimension of u3, uh, up to n times dimension of un. And then if I uh, collect all uh, units, I get n plus one. And I can improve this slightly, but let us, uh, let us stick to this, uh, to this estimate, which is uh, kind of clear. So this is our result. Uh, of course, it depends. Well, I mean, it, it, it depends on the order in which I take this product. So U1, U2, and so on. It's clearly uh, the, the best, the most effective estimate is if you order 
uh, uh, factors u by their dimension. So if the sum of them are smaller, you start with uh, 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 removing them and then you keep the high dimensional uh, elements in, the, in, in cohomology in order to get a bet better estimate. Yeah? Um, and also, if all of the uh, uh, elements in the product uh, in the product are one dimensional, you essentially get the sum one plus two plus three and so on. So you get the categorical estimate. So if all of your elements are of dimension one, you uh, you just retrieve the, the the category estimate. But if they are higher dimension, like for example in the complex projective uh, uh, space, oh, you essentially double your estimate. And this is what happens. So uh, if uh, I, I take all elements of dimension one, uh, I get the same estimate. This is in the case of the uh, real projective space. You have u to the n. I mean, the, the one dimensional element uh, to the nth power is, uh, uh, is, is non-zero. And when you plug this in, you get this sum. But in the case of the complex projective, uh, space. Uh, now you have twos in each of those uh, places. So uh, and adding up, uh, you get n plus one square, which is essentially twice as uh, I mean the, uh, two times better I mean, uh, than than the previous estimate. And for the sphere, uh, you essentially start with the uh, with the first element, and there is a okay, there is a reason. So uh, uh, we get n plus uh, we get n plus two. Um, so now um, this value here is exact. So this is exactly the covering type of the sphere, and also the size of the minimal triangulation of the sphere as a boundary uh, of uh, of the uh, n dimension n plus one dimensional simplex. Uh, and these two are best known. And they were actually previously known uh, using similar, I mean, but uh, again, a bit more combinatorial, uh, combinatorial methods. Huh? Uh, so, I mean, what, uh, uh, I mean, th this formula is, is essentially a systematic uh, way to, to derive this kind of, uh, of estimates. Uh, those for projective spaces uh, were known previously, but we were able to use them uh, in uh, in other contexts, and, may, and maybe also our first paper about uh, uh, on, on this topic uh, was um, an estimate so of how many simplices are needed to triangulate uh, a Grassmann a Grassmann uh, manifold. And the reason was, uh, I mean, I was talking about our methods um, at, at the seminar, and. Uh, uh, Radu Zivaljevic from, uh, from Belgrade asked me, so, so he said, well, I mean, there is a known open problem. People are trying to triangulate uh, Grassmannian manifolds, and it seems that there are no, no known uh, uh, triangulations as soon as k is bigger than 2 and uh, n, is, uh, uh, n, n is relatively small. So what's the problem? How, how big are those triangulations? Uh, okay, we plug in the, uh, uh, the information about the cohomology of Grassmannian uh, manifolds. You know that they are generated by Stiefel Witten classes. There is some tedious computation, but immediately you find that any known triangulation must be really big. So if I start with a, I mean, with a re relatively small guy, so this is G3 of R8. So this is a, a 15 dimensional smooth manifold. Um, it has a really nice, um, uh, okay. Uh, sorry, I didn't uh, see uh, Massimo asked me whether CT is sublinear uh, with respect to, uh, to connected sum. Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, maybe, maybe I, I will say something at, at the end, let me. Uh, 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 let me just continue with this. So um, uh, uh, let, let me give you uh, just some numbers. So uh, if I take th this space, it is a 15 dimensional space. It can be uh, uh, decomposed as a CW complex, which has one zero cell 
one uh, 15 dimensional cell and all together, I think eight uh, over three. So, I mean, about 50, uh, about 50 um, uh, cells. Of course, it's not a, a regular decomposition, uh, but I mean, our estimate says that it needs at least about 117 vertices and probably much more. Uh, and then combining this with the uh, results that I mentioned uh, previously, so lower bound theorem and so on, it needs at least 500,000 uh, uh, 15 dimensional simplices, so facets, and altogether more than 250 million simplices. Um, okay, it is not surprising that there are no explicit um, uh, triangulations now. Eh? And these numbers increase really uh, uh, incredibly. So if, if you take, I think, G4 of R20, you need more simplicity that there are uh, particles in the universe. I mean, uh, much. So, I mean, <laughs> it's a question when you say that something like that is triangular, uh, can be triangulated, what does it really mean? Huh? Okay. So, uh, uh, this is our estimate based on uh, on cohomology products. And finally, I get to the, um, uh, the question from the uh, I mean from the from the title. So, what happens with weighted estimates? Uh, this really be, uh, uh, starts being quite uh, quite technical. So, we have just. Uh, uh, Put an, uh, a preprint on uh, on archive. It's called estimates of covering type and minimal triangulation based on uh, category weight. Uh, and here, what we do is that we combine uh, the, this method uh, based on cup length, uh, but we take into account weights of cohomology classes. Now, I mean, when you combine those two, th this. Um, uh, starts being a, a bit messy because uh, then you then you want to maximize two things. One of them is dimension of elements, and the other is uh, is weight. Because when you uh, when you take into account uh, weight, that means you find that there must be certain number of uh, elements uh, or I mean of open sets in the in the good cover which intersect. So they form a categorical set. You can remove them, but uh, uh, this will not kill you. Uh, we will not kill uh, an element of weight two, so you have a chance to get another element of high dimension. I mean, another set of, uh, of uh, I mean, of uh, another family of uh, open subsets which intersect. They form uh, a categorical set. And you can remove that one, and only at that point you know that uh, uh, an element of say of weight two dots because it sinks if you want. It it it, uh, it, it, uh, uh, it has higher weight, so if you want, it sinks to uh, um, uh, categorical sets. And of course, if you are able to find uh, elements of higher weight, you can you can repeat. So in a sense, you can you need to trade a bit between dimensions of elements and their uh, uh, their weights, uh, and this this is a real problem because most of the time we we find elements of weight two which are also two dimensional and non trivial elements, especially when we when we have some uh, sphere factors which are uh, high dimensional but of weight one. And um, so formulas uh, are not uh, direct. You need to maximize over, over certain sets of products. And the formula, OK, I, I'm going to write down the formula, but it's relatively uh, hard to read. So the formula now gets it is uh, uh, the covering type of x is bigger than, OK, there is one uh, unit, then the weight of a non-trivial product. And then a sum of maxima of dimensions over all uh, subproducts of S with uh, uh, with, uh, with with the weight, which is okay. There are primes which are on wrong places. Sorry. So this is S prime here. This one is wrong, 
and there is s prime here i was copying and it's uh, uh so you 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 uh, you make a sum along all sub products uh of, of certain weight you take maximum of the of dimensions uh sum sum this up and get uh, get result okay so the numbers are maybe not uh that uh, that interesting the cases that we are able to uh to treat are i mean interesting spaces with non trivial fundamental group usually a cyclic zip uh, uh, cyclic of order p uh, with p prime so we are able to uh, to obtain estimates for manifolds which have um a fundamental group uh, zp and the universal color is uh cohomology uh zp cohomology equivalent to products of spheres so this this is not only products of spheres but also uh spaces like uh, uh stiffer manifolds uh, and and similar then uh, we are able to treat and give estimates for lie groups with cyclic pi one uh, uh we can take orbit zp orbit spaces of highly connected manifolds uh non one connected symplectic manifolds because then we know that i, I mean which are what's called um uh, symplectically aspher aspherical uh, so for each of them we uh, we give some estimates and these are essentially completely new because uh, i mean no one uh had this um uh, I mean, this tool, uh, tool before. I mean, it turns it turns us some numbers. Uh, most of the time, it says, well, I mean, in order to triangulate even a relatively simple spaces, you need uh, a big, a huge number of uh, of vertices, and then, of course, an even bigger number of uh, of higher dimensional simplices. Okay, so uh, here is a list of papers, uh, some of them published, some of them, uh, uh, one of them is uh, still a preprint. So um, there, is, uh, there is a way to, uh, to compute a, lo a lot of things here. Huh? Okay, almost uh, on time. Thank you. Oh, certainly. No. Thank you very much, Pelle, for the really beautiful talk. So before we get to questions, let's all briefly unmute ourselves and applaud for the speaker. All right, so questions? Um, there is the question I, I had before, Peter. Uh, yeah. Is it known? Uh, I, I mean, what you have said about surfaces let, lets me think that it is actually a sublinear with respect to uh, uh, connected sums, but it, it, is it in general? Okay, so... The, the, <laughs> um, okay, if you think it in this way, so uh, you want to... You have uh, one manifold with some triangulation and then the other manifold the same dimension with the sun triangulation. You can remove just one simplex uh, and uh, on, on each side you glue them together, you get the triangulation of the uh, of the connected sun. I mean, we can discuss how you, I mean, what is the, uh, I mean, the uniqueness and so on, but the, the, this is some example. So clearly here the, uh, uh, the size, but this is an upper bound. Huh? Okay, so this is an upper bound saying that, uh, of course, you can, uh, uh, you can obtain uh, this. So in, in a sense, you would say, uh, okay, um, whenever you do this, uh, you, you can do all this. And, and uh, of course, often it is, I mean, it's easy to get much, much better results. I mean, if you get it, so the minimal triangulation of a torus is uh, with seven vertices. Huh? So if you put two tor tori together, you, you know that you can triangulate this, this with less than, so this is seven plus seven, you remove three. So this is less than 11 vertices, but actually the, the, uh, the minimal triangulation of the double torus is I think nine vertices, if I'm, uh, if I'm not wrong. And I mean, you, you get, better and better but still this is uh, this is uh, uh, an upper bound but <laughs> uh, 
at some point we thought that uh, uh, for an even simpler thing, so not for manifolds, but just for wedges, uh, we thought that the um, covering type of a wedge is always bigger than the covering type of the, uh, of the spaces. Well, this is not true. So by, uh, you have some space, you have some minimal um, uh, um, uh, your minimal cover of minimal homotopy triangulation. If you add something, you can obtain a smaller uh, 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 good cover. And it, it is not, <laughs> it's not the trivial, it's based on this uh, uh, wall's finiteness obstruction. <laughs> so essentially you, you take a space which uh, uh, does not, um, uh, uh, so it's a CW complex, but it's uh, not, uh, sorry, not CW complex, but uh, it is not, um, um, how it's called, not subordinated to a, uh, to a finite, um, uh, finite CW, uh, CW complex. But when you add spheres, actually, I think circles, uh, it, it becomes of, so you have something which has infinite covering type when you add some circles, you get you get a space that so you when you wedge some uh, circles and you get a space uh, which has a finite covering type. Uh, so this this is really surprising. I mean, we would always expect that. Uh, uh, I mean, it is a homotopy invariant. So uh, if you have something which is retract or a homotopy retract, it should it should have smaller value, but it doesn't. Um, Okay, and I mean, we try to, to say something about this, but we are, we are kind of stuck. We don't have how to, uh, <laughs> how to start things. So this is not exactly the answer of, uh, to, to your question, but in a sense, it is- Well, actually, the, the, the answer was very simple and it, it was trivial, I'm sorry. Uh, reformulated, uh, I would say, do you think that there might be a, a, a formula relating CT with uh, uh, connected sum somehow, apart from the, the upper bound, of course, which you uh, said. Um, um, no, I, I, I don't know. I mean, is uh, so. I mean, the, the, the only okay. So first of all, there are very few. Uh, because we are, we are essentially talking about the minimal triangulation. Now it is, I mean, very little is known about minimal triangulation. So there are only uh, spheres, surfaces, and some spaces called chasar tor tori. So they, they, these are the only infinite families for which minimal triangulations are known. And then there is a list, I think, of between 10 and 15 spaces for which minimal triangulations are known. Uh, then there are some uh, there, there are some estimates for a little bit more spaces, and that's all. So I mean, you don't even ex except for uh, surfaces, you you don't even have um, examples to to I mean to, to to try anything. So for surfaces, it is known. It is the the, the square root of the genus. So I mean, what means? Uh, okay, okay. And, and I mean, nothing else is known. At least not to me. Interesting, very interesting. Thanks a lot, Peter. Yeah, welcome. More questions. I wanted to ask a question, Peter, I was, I was curious if you could say a little bit of your route into this type of work in the sense that, you know, minimal triangulations is, is sort of a, on the surface, a quite combinatorial question, but then you're using, you know, some, um, you know, uh, homotopy. some um, homotopy theory, right? So, um, you know, uh, what was your route into, into this line of, uh, of work? Um. Okay, so I mean, this, the, I mean, uh, I think that when this paper by uh, uh, Karubi and Weibel appeared, uh, 
Watson's told me that, I mean, he thinks this is an interesting question. And at that time, Dan was the, the, uh, writing a paper on, uh, on the nerve theorem uh, uh, in persistent homology. And so, so we start talking about that. And then realize that, uh, I mean, their motivation was completely different. They wanted to use discovering type to measure difference uh, between values of uh, different cohomology theories on, on spaces. I mean, if you know something about the covering type, you can kind of get, uh, give uh, uh, upper bounds on the difference between the value of say some K theory with some, uh, uh, some boardism theory for different spaces. So that was a completely different uh, motivation. Um, and I, I don't remember what happened. At some point, we uh, we realized that this is really similar to category theory. Got our first estimates, and then the thing uh, the thing developed, and found quite a lot of interest in the, among people that do combinatorial geometry, because I mean that's a completely. I mean they never used anything like that. Okay. Fantastic! Yeah, that's a really nice story. Yeah. Further questions, comments? Yes, please go ahead. <laughs> May I make a remark? Namely, uh, you asked it about the surfaces. And in the case of surfaces, of course, uh, the problem of minimal triangulation had been solved by combinatorial methods, but it can be that now in the state of art, also by UCT, where there are two Argentinian mathematicians who published a paper more or less the same time as, as we did our first, in which they derive a CT of surfaces, showing that it is exactly the same as uh, the number of vertices of minimal triangulation, which means because you, you it cannot be <laughs> larger, yeah? It has to be a lower estimate, but with one exception, namely uh, the double torus uh, has CT smaller than uh, the number of uh, minim vertices of minimal triangulation. And this is not, it's non-trivial example because it is not manifold. Of course, they have to construct a complex which, uh, which is homotopy equivalent to, to double torus, but uh, it has one, no, it's, it's cities one smaller than this number of ringel and kinel of, of vertices of minimal triangulation. So uh, in some sense, it, it replied to, to, to your question about relations in the case of uh, surfaces. Okay, this is everything. Yeah, that, that, that's a really uh, strange example because when you think at first, you say, okay, uh, if you have, uh, I mean, manifold is in a sense, you would expect that uh, if it has uh, some minimal color, you cannot have, uh, I mean, a minimal good color of a surface cannot be improved by taking something which is not, uh, or I mean, or a manifold in general, of a closed manifold. You cannot improve it by taking something which is not uh, manifold. But actually, you can you you can pinch uh, uh, double torus, and double torus is the only surface that, that allows this. You can pinch the uh, double torus in a, in such a way that you get something which is not manifold. It is homotopy equivalent to the double torus, and it has a smaller <laughs> covering type by one. I like that a lot. That's very neat. No, no, no systematic reason. I mean, you look at a specific triangulation and you find a, a smaller good cup. Any final questions? Well, if not, uh, thanks again, Petter, and, and let me end the recording here. Okay, thank you very much.